Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video and welcome to the series on the Git. So let's go ahead and get started finally with the Git and let me walk you through how we are going to deal with this entire thing. First, reminding you again that this series is not about memorizing every single command that's available with the Git, but of course to understand the workflow and some of the behind the scene details of how Git properly works. So it's going to be a mixed balance of the theory as well as the practical. And I highly recommend to follow along uh, because you're going to learn so much when you type these commands uh, with your own hands on the keyboard. It's a much better learning experience. So try them out. So let's go ahead and get started. Let me show you the setup of how we are going to proceed into this one. So this is where our browser lies and we will not be focusing too much on the browser because majority of the things that we require or we need to understand to study the documentation will be covered up in this video only. And from the next video onwards, uh, we'll be focusing majorly on the terminal. Now Git is available uh, on the GUI platform as well, but I think the more you understand about the commands and how they work, the better you will be performing on those GUIs as well. On the other screen, we do have our handwritten notes here as well. Uh, they are so much better way of teaching uh, the subjects, I still believe that. And this series is going to be a mixed balance of how to proceed, the entire flow of the, flow of the series, as well as the theoretical knowledge. I know a lot of you are a big fan of just show me the practical, but once you understand the behind the scene details, the learning journey is much, much better. And you'll be remembering it throughout your life. That's the experience I want to give you that once you understand the Git from here, that's it, you are done for the lifetime. So, coming back, first what we're gonna do is, uh, we're gonna go back onto this. So, in order to get this, by the way, if you want to grab the terminal, the exact one that I'm using, it's warp. Uh, again, common question that comes around. Uh, now let's go on to the Git. So, if you want to go and download the Git, the website is git-scm, uh, the source control manage management software that we are going through. And this is the home page that you're going to see. If you look at the download, it will automatically detect your system and will give the software for you. You can also click on the download and get the Mac, Linux or Windows version, whichever you like. Git is pretty easy to install. It's really simple. All you have to do is just open up the file and next, next, I agree, okay. That's all you have to do. And remember the one thing, that this is the software that you're installing. Just because you have installed the software doesn't mean that we are using the software. It's just the installation process, the learning of the software, how it works, that we're going to go through together. Also, you're going to see that on the home page there is a documentation guide as well. Now, this is the most confusing part because if you click on the documentation and click on the reference manual, it looks like that, hey, it's a pretty small documentation, but it is absolutely a jungle. If you just look at the git or even the git config, you'll find that it is unreadable. It is so much of in-depth and so much of the things. Yeah, look at the scroll bar on the right. Yeah, you got this one. So it is so much that it is almost impossible to go through with this. I don't call this as a documentation, it is more of a reference manual. Whatever you need is there, but it is almost impossible to learn from this documentation. This is more of a reference guide if you ever need to explore some things more. So answer is there, but it's not easy to find that. Now coming back, uh, let's go ahead and on to this one. So first and foremost, I have created a folder where we are going to keep all of our learning materials and all of that. It's not really that big that I should give it to you via the GitHub account or something. It's really the text file. So first and foremost, I'm going to type the CD and we'll be going to a very specific folder. I'll just drag and drop this folder here. So it automatically picks up that folder. I'll go ahead and hit an enter. So now I'm into this folder. There is absolutely nothing into this one. Let's go ahead and create a couple of directories into this one. So you can see that mkdir and we're going to call this one as git1. And we're also going to call this one as git2. And do we need three as well? Let's just go ahead and have this one. So now I have three folders inside this one, git one, two, and three. Now assume these are just regular folder, no assumption, no techniques, nothing right now. Uh, just a quick question. Do you think that the software that I've installed git might be somehow associated with these folders? Absolutely not. It is not possible for them. That's exactly what I'm saying. Git is just a software in order to make sure that Git tracks what's happening in my these folders, I need to make sure I give it a command to track all of this. And maybe, maybe for some reason, I want to track Git 1 and uh, Git 2 and not the Git 3. There's also a possibility on that. So that's exactly what we're going to study in the notes part. So let me go through with this. So first of all, let me go ahead and walk you through with these all notes that we have. And this will help us to keep a track of all the things. 
First of all, uh, let's assume and understand this major difference that Git is a software. It is just a software. And the GitHub is a service or a service provider and they are very different. When initially you get started into the software journey, it is okay to assume that they are the same, uh, but eventually you'll realize that there are many other service providers like Git. So whatever you do through the Git and you want to keep an online version of it safe somewhere in the cloud, that's what the GitHub is used for. And there are other services as well, like there's Bitbucket, which is pretty popular, and there are tons of others as well, which are not that popular, but they exist. Another thing, what does the Git actually does? What's the whole role? What's the point of it? I, all, I always say that, assume that this is something like a video game. In the video game, you cannot clear the level on just one go. You need the checkpoint that, hey, I'm safe till now here, so if I restart the game, I want to be here on this point. This, is exactly hap this exactly happens in the version control system. It keeps the track of the file and the changes of that. So whatever the changes you have made, uh, it marks a checkpoint there, and if anything goes wrong, you can just go back there. Not only that, that's also the, that obviously is the priority of the software, but it also helps to work in collaborative environment. Maybe there are 100 people working on a software, maybe two people for this example. Uh, we can actually go ahead and work in collaborative environment. We're going to see that demo as well. Here is my learning path that I recommend everyone to who's, who want to learn the Git is get the basics first. You cannot just deep dive into this. I see a lot of people who just look at the four or five commands that are available on the GitHub while uploading the files and never ever does uh, the deep dive in the Git. My recommendation is get the basics first and then use it in your daily life. Whatever you're doing, whatever the code you're writing, just use it daily and then face the problem. This course will give you a very solid foundation, but you have to face your own problems and solve those problems via chat GPT or the Stack Overflow, however you do that. That's the best way of learning the Git. Use it daily, face the problem. Now I have covered a lot more than just the basics in this course, uh, which is required for you. And that's why this note exists. Uh, but again, you don't have to worry too much. And obviously you will be facing some of the troubles which are outside of the course curriculum. So that's, that's okay. okay. Moving on, first of all, we need to understand some of the terminologies to go and dive deep into the Git ecosystem. The first terminology is known as repo, and it's a short form for repository, or we can uh, informally call this one as just a folder. So yeah, that's it. A folder which contains a lot of software files is known as repository, and in the world of Git, we call it as repo. Repo is nothing, it's a Git on system uh, versus tracking the repo. Uh, so there's a difference between having just the folder and some folder which are being tracked by the Git. So the very first command that we're introducing here, then we'll come back on the Git repo and not tracked files and all of that. The first command that we're going to learn is the Git dash dash version. And there's a small thing about this command as well that I would like to walk you through. So if I go ahead and run this command that is Git, you can run the dash V as well, or you can run the dash dash version as well. Version, and if I go ahead and hit an enter here, you can see that my version is 2.39.1. And if you see the online version of the Git, which is available is 2.44. Now, what you need to understand is Git is a very, very reliable software. It doesn't ship out every next update on every next Monday, but whatever the version you have, anything above, let's just say 2.1 or something, you are absolutely fine. This software has never shipped the breaking changes. And I don't think so it will do in the future as well. Very liable, very uh, pleasant software to work on with this one. So the first command that we have studied is all just about the version. So this is what we get as the version system. All right, moving further down. Now here's an interesting diagram that we all need to track. So this is our major root folder. And in this folder, we have created multiple folders. Consider this as git1, consider this as git2, and consider this as git3. So as I've just mentioned, the software is installed in a system doesn't mean it's tracking everything. You need to mention it that this is my Git repo. This is my Git repo. Once you mention this and initialize your Git in that folder, that folder is particularly getting tracked. And the tracking of this folder can be totally independent from this folder. And also, if you haven't mentioned that this folder should not be tracked, that's it. It's never going to be tracked. Your software is not going to be uh, interfering in that one. So this is the most important part onto this one. Now, uh, let's go ahead and run an initialize couple of folders so we will learn that how we can make this entire source code or the folder as trackable 
and we'll also find the status of this entire folder. You don't want to track everything in your, in your computer, so we're gonna go ahead and learn about this. And then we'll come back onto these notes and talk about this uh, hidden folder that we do have here. Uh, we'll just work on with this one. So let's go back onto this command line, and as I can see, if I go ahead and do a quick ls, I have git1, git2, and git3. Let's just say I want to track git1 and git2 and not the git3. First and foremost is you can always check what's the status of the git. Now, I don't recommend to just initialize it outside where you don't want to track things. Go ahead and initialize the git only where you want to track the things. So I can run the command like git status here as well. So git status, and it will surely give me that, hey, Faddle, not a git repository. That's a good thing. It's not tracking the things here, and that's exactly what I want. If I go ahead and run the ls here, now let's go ahead and learn that how we can track a particular folder so that our software is activated in that folder. Let's go into the git1. So let's go ahead into the git1 folder. I'm currently into that. There is nothing inside it. And I can do an ls-la to see all the hidden folders as well. And as you can see, there is nothing inside it. Now, first of all, let's check. It's always a good habit. Make it your habit is to run the git status. This is a command which you should run often. So go ahead and make this in habit. It's OK. Now the first command that we're going to learn about is initialize the git software. The moment you do git init, which is a short command for initialization, just hit the enter and now it will give you this kind of a response that, hey, uh, using the master name for the initial branch, and we'll learn about the concept of branching and all these things in a matter a, a little bit later. But right now we can see it gave us some of the output. Now the fun part is if I go ahead and check the git status again, now it gives me different messages. It says that, hey, uh, git status, on master branch, no commit yet, and nothing to commit. That's okay. We'll learn about these terminologies a little bit later. But one thing is sure that it's not giving me those error message, and this particular folder is now being tracked by the git. And if I go a little bit back and do a quick ls, I can now say that the git1 is a folder which is being tracked by the git software, and these two softwares, no, they are not getting tracked at all. Let's go ahead and move on further into this, that how this actually happened. The whole thing is, git status is to check the status of the git software. And the git init is, uh, by the way, this is always being run as one time per project. That's why I say I love these notes because it helps me to keep in track and all the things which I want to share, the inner details, they never get missed out. So the git init command, you always run only one time in a project. Once the git folder is there and the initialization happens, you don't do again. You can keep on adding, deleting, removing files of your software, whatever you are doing. Keep on doing that, but you don't do git initialize again. What git initialize does is it creates a dot git folder. Since the folder starts with the dot, it is hidden, but it's actually there. And it's a hidden folder to keep track of all of your files and folders and subfolders and sub sub subfolders. So you can go pretty uh, deep into that. Now, when we do uh, simply go into the git one, we do an ls, we don't see it, but if I go ahead and do a simple ls-la, which is to show the hidden folders, we can see that this folder now exists. That's an interesting folder. And this folder requires a lot of theoretical knowledge to go into the depth of it. Why don't we start just here? Let's go into a dot git and go up here, do a quick ls, and yep, there's so much in here. There's a head folder, there's a hooks, there's a refs, there's a config, info, description, object. And what you'll notice that these folders and all these structures, they grew, they are going to grow up as we bring more files into this folder. But you never ever, yep, never ever go into this folder and do any changes manually. If you do that, uh, risk is on you. <laughs> the whole, the mess that you're going to create, it's totally on you. So what we're gonna do, just to give you a brief idea, I can just go ahead and uh, click on this and I can command click on this and I can open this folder. Uh, just up here. So this is just a file. I'm gonna, uh, I'll just open this refs here. So, all right, so this refs, and this opens up the refs. So you can see there's a head, there's a tags. Yes, we are gonna discuss about the heads. Right now there's nothing inside it, there's nothing inside the tags. Uh, but yes, these are actual folders which actually keeps the track of it. Now right now I don't want to make any mess into this one. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go out of this one and do a quick ls, nothing is there. That's what we have as of now. Okay. Uh, now this is looking good. Let's go ahead and understand a couple of working mechanism of the git. Then we're gonna create a couple of files into this, folders onto this one. We'll even open up our uh, VS code and we'll start with that. 
But first, let's go ahead and understand the entire workflow. And once we are going to do the practical of the workflow, you'll understand it a little bit better. So you will also hear quite a lot about these commit statements. The commit statements are almost exactly like the checkpoints which happens in any video game that you have played in your uh, childhood time or even if you still do play just like I. So commit is something which is known as checkpoint. So in the world of software, we love to call them with different and unique names. So we call this as a commit. But if you call this as a checkpoint inside yourself, that's okay. That's going to be fine. The whole idea behind uh, things is uh, we write something into a directory, uh, we add that and we commit that. So there is couple of there are a couple of more commands before you actually do the commits. You cannot just go ahead and write the commit directly. So this is where I have added this small diagram on the right side, which helps us to understand that how the workflow of a basic very simple git actually works and we'll do this one as well in the next video as well. So the first is we have to make a working directory. The point of making a working directory is simply we have git initialized there. We do have that folder now. After that we have to run a command of git add and this is not a complete command. We have to mention the file name here or you can use a shortcut of dot to add everything. We'll work through with that. And that actually brings everything into the staging area. This means this is not yet committed. That means, yeah, this checkpoint. This checkpoint is not yet made, but this is known as something as staging area. That means, hey, I'm ready to commit some of the files. Then you simply go ahead and run the commit command, which is exactly this one. We are ready to make a checkpoint. Once you do the git commit command, then the repo is now onto a checking stage. Now, a lot of people, why they get confused with the git and GitHub? Because once the repo is created, it is kind of a very common that you push the entire thing, uh, the whole thing that you have made along with the checkpoints and the source code, you want to push it onto some of the cloud uh, provider or cloud git provider, which is one of the GitHub. So that's where exactly the git push command works through. We will not be doing the push command yet. We'll want to understand the flow till here. So we have already created a working directory. Now we want to add those files and we want to bring them onto the staging area. We want to discuss what the staging area is. And then we want to learn about the commit that how do we actually properly make a commit and move it here. So this is our goal, how we go with that. So in the next video, we'll go through with this staging area that how it works. But before that, we need to do some practical as well. So that we're going to do in the second part of the video itself. So I hope uh, this entire thing was pretty useful, pretty fun, entertaining as well. Let's go ahead and catch up in the next video and go through with the staging area part.